welcome to part two. <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention uh, in part one, wearing my lovely She-Ra shirt. Nothing would make me feel more ready for wrestling than She-Ra, She-Ra, She-Ra. I'm not kidding either, She-Ra is awesome. <laughs> anyway, we move on to the Raw Tag Team Championship. We have Jason Jordan and Seth Rollins, yes really, defending the tag titles against Sheamus and Cesaro, who all, everyone there except for Jason Jordan had already been in the Rumble match. So the way this match works is, Jason Jordan comes out and he takes a throw into the stairs and he's selling a concussion. Which is really in poor taste considering what we know about concussions nowadays. You know, I'm just going to move you over a bit there. There we are. Um, yeah, so, I don't know, anyway. So they wrestle and they wrestle and Sheamus and Cesaro beat down Seth Rollins. And then near the end of the match he goes and he tags Jason. Jason comes in, does the whoa, whoa. Tags back out. Seth Rollins comes in, and he can't take the onslaught from Sheamus and Cesaro, and we have new Raw Tag Team Champions. The Bar are now four-time Tag Team Champions. That's pretty much what I thought. I imagine this is going to lead to a match between Seth Rollins and Jason Jordan. I mean, match will be good. It's really all I can say about that. I don't know. And then we come to the most disappointing match of the night. We've got the Universal Championship, the Beast Brock Lesnar defending against Braun Strowman and Kane, the old, the most dangerous Republican candidate that you'll ever see. Well, you know what? Maybe he isn't. Um, anyway, so yeah, these three have a slow plotting match, and there's only three points I'm gonna hit. Point number one: at some point in the match, Braun Strowman knees Brock in the face and pisses him the fuck off to the point where Brock just straight on punches Braun Strowman in the head. That's one. Two, Brock F5s both Braun and Kane through the ring announce tables outside. Impressive. And three, at the end, Braun is power slamming Brock because he's gonna, you know, he's about to pin him, but Kane comes and pulls Braun out of the ring. Braun climbs up onto the apron. Brock shoves Kane into Braun, knocks him down, and then F5's Kane. One, two, three. And still, Universal Champion Brock Lesnar, because nobody is beating Brock until Roman spears him in front of 70,000 booing fans at WrestleMania, because this time for sure, it was what it was. Really. Anyway, after that, we have the history. History. Did I mention we're making history? This is historic. It's important. It's history. First ever Women's Royal Rumble. They, they mentioned it a couple times. Oh, and we have Stephanie McMahon out there doing commentary. And I actually thought that she was going to be, you know, the, the screeching, like, you know, ah, oh, with her off-putting. They make her, like, her, they make her talk in a way that makes her sound much more grating than I imagine she actually is. Uh, but they didn't. Instead, she just sounded like, you know what she sounded like? If, if you've ever played any of those, like 2K18 or 2K16 or, or any of those wrestling games, she sounds like one of when you're playing that and you're wrestling a match and you, it's just a bunch of like disjointed comments spliced together depending upon what wrestler you pick. Like every now and then, every now and then she'd be like, you can't question the heart of Becky Lynch. Sasha Banks has almost been eliminated. Oh my! Like it, it literally just sounds like she's like, all right, like she's got a list and she's just like, okay, so I guess I should be excited here. Oh my! And uh, here comes one of the legends. I remember this legend from X and X a year. Her and I did this, and it just, it w wasn't very good. It just wasn't. She wasn't as bad as I thought she would be, which is probably the only compliment I can give her, and that probably doesn't sound like much of a compliment, but there we are. <laughs> Okay, so number, entrant number one and two were two of the four horsewomen, Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch. The other, one of the other horsewomen, SmackDown Women's Champion Charlotte, was sitting at ringside, as was Raw Women's Champion Alexa Bliss, to see the winner of the Royal Rumble would choose which championship they would challenge for. So, these two wrestle, and of course, it's really good, because they're really good. Number three is Boomhauer, man, I tell you what, man, dang, hold down that ring, man, get it, just, yo. Sarah Logan, who is Southern, and so they make her, like, they, they make her ramp it up even more to the point where I can't understand what she's saying. And that's why people call her Boomhauer, and I, I feel bad for her. Like, it just, anyway. WWE, man, what can you do? 
Number four is Mandy, or sorry, Sarah Logan of the Riot Squad. And number four is Mandy Rose of Absolution. And you won't be seeing Paige because she's got a career-ending neck injury and they've told her that she has to retire. It's only 25 years old, which is really too bad. Anyway, uh, Mandy Rose is out there and she's actually quite impressive. I think that with some seasoning, she could be quite good. Uh, number five is Lita, who was, looked good, actually. Like, she hadn't lost a step. She's got to be 40, maybe even older than that. And I mean, not the thing that that's old, but in terms of being an athlete and hasn't had a match in eight or nine years, she looked good. Um, yeah, after that, number six is NXT's Kari Sane, who um, I believe was substituting for Alicia Fox, who broke her tailbone and will not be competing in the Women's Royal Rumble or the Mixed Match Challenge. So it'll be interesting to see who Goldust's new partner will be. I'll have to see. Um... Kari Sane comes out, and I do love her. I think she's just fantastic, and she, her moves are crisp, and she's good. Like, I love her elbows in the corner, and I love her, her elbow off the top rope is fantastic. It looks great. Um, so yeah. Oh, and of course, I should mention that, uh, Lita does her dueling twists of fate, and, and not dueling, her twist of fate and her spit, her DT, and she does her moonsault, and it was sloppy 15 years ago, and it's sloppy now. I'm glad she doesn't do that regularly, because she is going to break her neck. Wow. Um, after that, number seven, Tamina, who comes out, headbutts a couple of people, and then gets tossed out by Lita. So, yeah, they're, they're, they're trying to make it sound like, uh, Tamina is, like, the same power and the same, like, aggressive nature as Nia Jax, and she just isn't. She just isn't. She's just a jobber, and everybody knows it. So. After that, number eight is Dana Brooke who is very powerful, and that's all she's got. She needs more training, in my opinion. So, After that, number nine is Tori Wilson, who was in WCW in 1999, and then in the WWF from 2001 to, I think, about 2005 or six somewhere in there. She was never much of a wrestler, and clearly being away from this for, God, ten years, but she still looked good, like she still looked to be in excellent shape, and she was trying, so I'll give her that, but she just, she was never that great, so, but you know, whatever. Uh, number 10 was Sonya Deville, put up your, put your hair up and square up. She's out there, and she's, like, punching people in the face and doing her thing. I like Sonya Deville, I think she's quite good. Number 11 is Liv Morgan, uh, from the Riot Squad, so they're out there, and she's, she's doing her thing, and she's okay. Like I said, she'll probably get better with time. Uh, number 12 is Molly Holly, who was an actual good 2000s wrestler. I always liked Molly Holly, and it was great to see her. And she looks like she, again, she probably hasn't had a match in 12 years or more. And it looks like she has not lost a step at all. She does the Molly go round, which is a flip off the top rope and lands, and, and, and it looked good. So, uh, yeah. Uh, after that, number 13 is Lana. Because, yeah, they hate her so much. Because it's very apparent that she really doesn't know what she's doing. And look, I will always be happy with anyone who wants to get better. And I understand that it's a work in progress. But I do think that this she should have been in NXT to be given a chance to learn how to do this before shoving her out there in front of these audiences because they know who she is, where she's going to embarrass herself or hurt herself or hurt others because she doesn't... She's not good yet she's not she doesn't have enough training but in this case she was fine like she slapped i can't even remember who and then took down Liv morgan i'm pretty sure and you know it looked good uh after that number 14 is michelle mccool who you might remember as one of the co divas champions with layla yeah back in 2010 and again she looked good she probably hasn't had a match in eight nine years and she looked she looked good back. She got quite a few eliminations. She eliminated Sonya Deville and Liv Morgan and Molly Holly and Lana. So clearly she can still do this. There you go. Uh, number 15 was the leader of the Riot Squad, Ruby Riot, who is great. I love her heel energy. I think she'd be probably be better served as a babyface, but I mean, she's doing what she can to get what she's got going over. So, you know, no complaints. Number 16 is screeching coming from Vicky Guerrero, who used to be the SmackDown general manager in 2007, 8, somewhere in there. So there was the wrestler named Eddie Guerrero, and he was one of the best of all time, and his wife was Vicky Guerrero, 
uh, who wasn't a wrestler, but he passed away very suddenly, and she wanted to f find something to do to help pay for her her children's educations. Um, in fact, one of her daughters is now actually married to Aiden English. So there you are. Um, so she comes out and she screeches and screeches, and then everyone in the ring, Becky Lynch, Michelle McCool, Ruby Riot, and Sasha Banks, toss her out in like 50, because she's not a wrestler. She doesn't, she can't take bumps. So after that, number 17 is Carmella. She comes out with her Money in the Bank briefcase. She comes out there and she's doing her dance and Vicky clubs her with her own Money in the Bank briefcase. That was kind of funny. I like that. Um, after that, number 18, Natty, Natalia comes out and she she's out there and she's doing her thing and she gets knocked down before she even gets to the ring, which was unfortunate. Uh, after that, number 19 is K Squared Kelly Kelly, who I never liked and she's the same. She's uh, okay, I guess. Number 20 is Naomi, who's more than okay. She's quite good, and she's her athleticism is unbelievable. The, the thing she can do, uh, amazing. Um, number 21 is Jacqueline, uh, a woman from the Attitude Era, 98 in the WWF, and God, probably 91, 90 in WCW is Miss Jackie. She's out there. Um, after that, uh, number 22 is Oscar, or sorry, no. Number 22 is Nia Jax, who is not like most girls, and comes out and proceeds to just kill everybody in the ring. Like, just completely clears it. A lot of women were laying around on the ground, and, like rolling through the bottom rope in order to, like, be out of the way for the spots and the things that were going on. And it probably wouldn't matter so much if it was only one or two women, but they were, all, like, five or six of them. So it was hard to tell who had been eliminated and who hadn't. Anyway... Uh, number 23 is Ember Moon, the NXT Women's Champion, spoiler again, who comes out with a taped up elbow and arm. So I'm guessing Shayna Baszler, like, really r clutched on the submission hold on her. And she's out there, and sh she looked great, you know? Like, she's, she's really good. And I stand by my conviction that the first time Asuka loses, it'll be to Ember Moon, who makes it to the main roster and finally defeats her. That's the way I see it. Uh, after that is Mickie James at number 26. Who comes out and is, is she still good? Number 27 is Nikki Bella, who is here, so hooray. Number 28 is Brie Bella, so you Brie Mo, wog, 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 and just, yeah. And uh, number 29 is Bailey, who I am convinced they just don't care about anymore. She gets nothing. Like, she, I think she was only in there for about five minutes before getting, you know, anyway. Number 30 is Tristratus, who's fantastic, and she still is another one of those women that looks like she hasn't lost a single step. The ring gets cleared out so that, well, not cleared out, they all just kind of move out of the way, so that Asuka and uh, Ember Moon can have a face-off and remember of their NXT days. And once again, Asuka gets the better of Ember Moon, slams her arm into the, uh, the rope, and, she, and Ember Moon falls out and is eliminated. Afterwards, they have the face-off between Tristratus and... Uh, Mickey James as a callback to their 2006 WrestleMania match, even with the the uh, lick. I won't do that because it might get my video might get taken down. Um, so they fight, and Trish gets the better of Mickey James by kicking her out of the ring. After that, everyone gangs up on Nia Jax and tosses her out, and um, then it is down to Sasha Banks, who's still there for God 55 minutes or so. Uh, the Bellas. Bailey and Trish Stratus, Sasha Banks, or Trish actually mocks the uh, thing that Sasha Banks does, but then Sasha tosses Trish, and then Sasha immediately gets behind Bailey, tosses her, throws her best friend right out of the ring. There are no friends in the Royal Rumble. So, the final four are the two Bellas and Sasha Banks and Asuka, and the Sasha Banks makes an allegiance with the Bellas, and they beat down Asuka, and she goes to the top rope to do that thing where she drives her knees into people on the ropes, and the Bellas catch her and throw Sasha Banks right out of the ring. So now it's down to the two Bella twins and Asuka, and they fight, and good lord does Asuka kick the ever-loving fuck out of these two. Jesus. And, um... But they knock her down, and Asuka throws Brie Bella over the top rope, but she hangs on for a while... And then um, Nikki Bella actually knocks her own sister right out of the ring. So then it comes down to Nikki Bella and Asuka, and they fight, and they go 
At one point, Asuka gets tossed over the rope but doesn't go out, and she, like, hooks her leg, Asuka's leg, on Nikki Bella's neck and pulls her over the top rope, and now they're both on the top rope, or on the, sorry, on the other side of the ring apron, and Nikki punches, or forearms Asuka down, but Asuka kicks the knees, but I think Nikki was too far away for what they were trying to do, because I think what they wanted was Asuka swept the leg and Nikki fell out, which she did and lost, but because she was so far, it just looks like she clipped her leg ever so slightly and then Nikki just fell to the floor. And Asuka is the winner of the first ever Women's Royal Rumble and is still undefeated. And after that, Alexa Bliss and uh, Charlotte come and stand and between Asuka and Asuka is going to decide is she going to go after Charlotte in the SmackDown Women's Championship or is she going to go after Alexa Bliss in the Raw Women's Championship? And before, before she can do anything, Ronda Rousey comes out. If you don't know who that is, she was a very prolific women's UFC fighter up until she got beat twice in under a minute and has been doing movies since. Not to say that she isn't a star, because she certainly is, but I think the iron is no longer as hot. She comes out and she clearly she watches this stuff because she points at the WrestleMania sign several times. Goes to shake Asuka hand, Asuka's hand. Asuka won't have it. So she goes outside and shakes a Stephanie's hand and then leaves. And that's the end. And then the show goes off the air. And I thought this was dumb. Asuka just won the first ever Women's Royal Rumble and didn't even get to pick where she would be going for WrestleMania. I mean, I suppose you could try and make something. It just... The moment was ruined. They had a moment here where she could celebrate and be the winner of the first Women's Royal Rumble and set up a big match, but no, Ronda Rousey's here. And again, that would have meant something if it had actually set anything up, but it didn't. It was just, oh, I'm so happy to be here in WrestleMania, and this just, I didn't like that. I didn't like Ronda just coming out and just being super happy to be there, and just, it just didn't do anything for me. So, yeah. So... That is the 2018 Royal Rumble. It was a very long show. Seven and a half hours almost. It was a long one, so I had to split this up into two videos. Um, I will be reviewing Raw, SmackDown, 205 Live, and NXT, as I always do after big four pay-per-views. Uh, plus, I'm interested to see what happens on 205 Live with the new GM and what's going to happen with the Cruiserweight title. So look forward to those reviews, and I will also be doing... Uh, NXT and SummerSlam and No Mercy and Hell in a Cell and I think I missed quite a few is Survivor Series and that NXT and Clash of Champions. All those will be done. I've got punishments for almost all of them ready, so that's fine. I'm just going to have to do the reviews of the shows. But thank you so much for watching. Uh, and like I said, next week will be the review of NXT TakeOver Philadelphia. So thank you guys so much, and be sure to check out the Punishment video also coming out next week where Wrestling Brother will be forced to try and make sense of, of some people on Twitter's interesting views. <laughs> what a story, Mark.